Hello, hypertension resistors. So today I want to feature several healthcare professionals who will give us an update on the new Delta variant. And one of them perhaps has an opposing view. So let's get to it. So what is this B1617.2 variant? variant, also known as the Delta variant that was first identified in India? Here's what Dr. Gregory Poland from the Mayo Clinic who answered this question recently on the Mayo Clinic podcast. Here is what he has to say. It's still the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but just like we have different strains of influenza, we have different strains of SARS-CoV-2. Is getting up to 19,000 cases a day in the U.S. We were down to 3,000. We're starting to see, just as we predicted, a surge as people took masks off and as restrictions were lifted before we had achieved high rates of immunization. It sounds like we just were three feet from go. Or we were just that close to getting out of the pandemic before we had this third surge or this another spike. We're getting conflicting advice about really how we should go forward. How serious is this new COVID-19 variant, the Delta variant? How bad is it at this point? Let's hear from the COVID task force on this. The seven-day average of hospital admissions is about 2,000 per day. This also represents an increase of about 7% from the prior seven-day average. In areas of low vaccination coverage, cases and hospitalizations are up. Further, we are seeing some small clusters and larger outbreaks of COVID-19 in locations such as camps and community events where proper, hard-learned prevention strategies are not enforced and the virus is readily able to thrive. Now, this doesn't sound good. It sounds like children are being affected by this. They're getting infected and they're bringing it home to their parents and then their parents are being infected if they're not vaccinated. So this does not sound good. So I guess the question really is, are these cases really preventable? Let's hear what they have to say about that. The sad reality is that despite our progress, we're still losing people to this virus, which is especially tragic given at this point it is unnecessary and preventable. Virtually all COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths in the United States are now occurring among unvaccinated individuals. Okay, so it sounds like it's... This is happening because people are not being vaccinated. So there are these uh, people who have problems and they don't want to get vaccinated. There are other people that can't get vaccinated due to other reasons why they're not vaccinated. Then there are the kids that have it has not been approved for them to be vaccinated. So there are various reasons why we haven't gotten to our herd immunity yet. Uh, Yeah, of course, the vaccinations are down. We do know that vaccinations have been down the last couple of weeks. So uh, is he really saying that this is really happening because people are not vaccinated? Uh, That sounds like the issue here. Let's hear what Dr. Anthony Fauci has to say about what the recommendations are now going forward. Here we have a vaccine that's highly, highly effective. It's easy to get, it's free, and it's readily available. So, you know, you've got to ask, what is the problem? Get over it. Get over this political statement. Just get over it and try and save the lives of yourself. And he went on to say, not just yourself, but to save your family as well. Because we all know if you become infected with the virus, you can bring it home to your family. Research has shown that some people are just asymptomatic. They don't have symptoms when they come down with COVID-19. But if the truth be told, most people recover from COVID-19, even older people. And generally, children are at low risk for COVID. However, the new variant is turning everything on its head. So what should we do now? Here is Dr. Greg Poland. Here is what he has to say about how they're keeping their cases down. Gee, at Mayo Clinic, the doctors are wearing masks and the patients are wearing masks and they're keeping each other safe. We've had no outbreaks attributed to 
to uh, receiving medical care here. And that's a real testament to doing things well. This one is worrisome because the original virus, whatever that infectivity was, the alpha variant or UK variant was about 50% more infectious. The Delta variant is 50% again more infectious. So we're starting to see, we've, we've had outbreaks in five different summer camps for kids as kids are getting back together. And it spreads into the community. We didn't see that with the original virus. So uh, I'm very concerned about school districts that are not going to have masking. I'm very concerned about communities where immunization rates are low. Everybody thinks that the pandemic is over with, but let's hear what the World Health Organization director has to say about that. Last week marked the fourth consecutive week of increasing cases of COVID-19 globally, with increases recorded in all but one of WHO six regions. And after 10 weeks of declines, deaths are increasing again. We continue to hear reports from all regions of the world about hospitals reaching capacity. The Delta variant is ripping around the world at a scorching pace, driving a new spike in cases and death. Not everywhere is taking the same hit, though. We're in the midst of a growing two-track pandemic where the haves and have-nots within and between countries are increasingly divergent. In places with high vaccination coverage, Delta is spreading quickly, especially infecting unprotected and vulnerable people and steadily putting pressure back on health systems. For health workers that have been in a titanic battle for more than a year and have record waiting lists to attend to, increased hospitalizations at in, at any level is a challenge to them and their patients and to the overall capacity of the health system. As countries lift public health and social measures, they must consider the impact on health workers and health systems. In countries with low vaccine coverage, the situation is particularly bad. Delta and other highly transmissible variants are driving catastrophic waves of cases, which are translating into high numbers of hospitalizations and death. The World Health Organization is fully aware that the vaccines alone will not get us out of this pandemic today is that we are experiencing a worsening public health emergency that further threatens lives, livelihoods, and a sound global economic recovery. It is definitely worse in places that have very few vaccines, but the pandemic is not over anywhere. Vaccines have never been the way out of this crisis on their own, but this current wave is demonstrating again just what a powerful tool they are. So why is this happening? How come we're having these spikes again? I mean, it sounds like we're going backwards. Let's hear what the World Health Organization, what explanation they have for us about this new wave. Context of a highly susceptible global population because of low vaccination coverage, because of the uneven use of vaccines, uh, the inequitable distribution of vaccines worldwide, and the low levels of seroprevalence based on natural infection around the world, largely in many countries who put in very strong measures to keep their populations protected. We also see this in the context of increased social mixing. What I was referring to was the increased social mixing in the context of the relaxation of public health and social measures. It wasn't necessarily related to the event itself, we know many gatherings can be held very safely. WHO has outlined a risk-based approach for small gatherings as well as large mass gatherings, which take into account uh, a risk assessment, looking at risk mitigation measures, looking at risk communication, having plans in place. And in many situations, these events can take place safely. The side events, the fan zones, the coming together um, in uh, populations that are not well vaccinated, um, without uh, interventions in place with the Delta variant can fuel spread. Whew, I thought she was going to say we needed to go back on lockdown. <sighs> well, at least we know that we can do things safely if we follow the recommendations. So let's hear again from the World Health Organization director and see um, some of the final comments that he had. Uh, but I think you'll hear our voice is getting more and more strident because now we really are entering 
this two-phase pandemic, this, this two-tier pandemic. And those, uh, that difference will become counted in, in, in unfortunately unavoidable debts. With regard to the broader measures, it is hard for everyone to sustain individual measures without government support. Nobody wants to go back into swinging lockdowns. We've talked about those measures that can reduce the risk of transmission. They don't necessarily stop it, but what they do is they reduce the risk of transmission, especially in the context of these variants, which are more highly transmissible. And what we've seen is vaccines are not perfectly effective at preventing transmission. They're highly effective at preventing hospitalization and death. And it is our view that the two measures together, public health and social measures, individual measures, and vaccination working together can keep this disease at some level of control without having to revert to these um, restrictive and destructive uh, lockdowns. Once the health system collapses, society has to shut down to take the pressure off the health system. And we're heading back towards health system collapse in a number of countries. And those countries who already have reasonable levels of vaccination, please don't have a false sense of security. You can end up right back in that same situation because given the transmissibility, particularly of the Delta strain, it is going to seek out those unvaccinated, unprotected, vulnerable people and it may put them back in hospital or may put them in need of intensive care. Making it just my responsibility to protect myself is fine. I do need to protect myself and I have a responsibility to myself. I have a responsibility to my family and my co-workers to do what I can not to become a source of infection uh, and to do what I can to protect others. But governments must continue to support people in doing that. And that can, may mean in, in facilitating that through basic rules around social mixing, basic rules around gatherings, uh, provision of uh, masks, and, 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 and just the, the organization of everything from public transport to make it easy for people to comply. People do need to take responsibility, all of us as individuals, but it is a contract, a social contract, and a sacred contract between government and communities to work together to collectively reduce the chance that diseases will, the disease will transmit. Let's hear from Dr. Sayed Mobin about his analysis on the status of protection in America. So what is my conclusion for U.S.? One is, I think that U.S. is coming out of the pandemic. I think for the most part, we have come out of the pandemic. Second is, the group that is left is mostly now youngsters. There are 11 million 65 plus that is very different from almost one third of the population that was 50, 65 plus. That is two. Third, there is a large group, about 72 million children, 12 to 18 years of age, that have a very decent potential to fight with the virus without much damage. That is three. And then fourth is when you count all the numbers of vaccinated, infected and recovered children, you have a very large number of population that has become protected. But I think generally we are out and I think Delta is not something that we should be too worried about. Maybe this will change in the future and we'll know more. But so far from the data, Delta is not showing any huge issues. Wait, wait a minute. That's not what we heard from the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control, and other healthcare professionals. Okay, so let's hear further from the Director General for the World Health Organization. Let's hear what he has to say about the vaccines and what we need to get us out this pandemic. We may not have the perfect vaccines in this generation of vaccines, but what we need to do is give every country and every body a fighting chance to get through this pandemic. People ask me a question, with just one question, when is this pandemic going to end? I say to them, it's in our hands. We can end it very soon. We can end it very soon because we have the tools now. So there you have it. You know what to do. You have the tools to do it. So let's get it done. Let's get through this pandemic. If you like this video, like it, share, and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.